about that, huh? So let's give it up for Dan Kilt, who's the de defensive coordinator, been in our church for, how long have you been in our church, Dan? How long have you been in our church for 25 uh, years? Uh, 1992. 1992, been in our church. There you go. Even before his wife, we, yeah, we oh just yeah. oh, way so. before her. Jeez. And then Coach Eagle's with us this morning. Also, give it up for Coach Eagle this morning. Thank you. Fresh off a state championship, but before we do that, I just want to recognize a friend of ours here. Um, I, I, I'm just I, Pastor Jerry showed me this this morning. Um, Medal of Distinguished Service, De Detective Joe Swenson. Plus, he also won the Detective of the Year. Uh, Joe Swenson, where are you at, Joe? Come on, stand up, Joe. Stand up. Let's give our law enforcement guys a good hand right there. Detective of the year right there. Come on, give him a hand. That's right. All right. So this morning, uh, Super Bowl came, and they won the state championship, and I was like, hey, let's get these guys for Super Bowl. We always do something fun on Super Bowl. And so this is a Super Bowl Sunday where you all wearing your jerseys. Any 49er fans out there? Okay, watch these guys. Joe, watch these guys very carefully. We just, uh, all two of them, they're in the sanctuary right now. <clears throat> Look at these. We got people on staff that are Packer fans. That's, that's the devil right there, I'll tell you. You never think, Pastor Jerry, you'd ever be called the devil, did you? You and your whole, you and your, you and your whole family are possessed for some reason. So, what we want to talk about this morning, you know, the Bible says that I wanted to read a scripture here because I think this is important. Um, you know, in my leadership teaching, where, where it's a big thing to talk about culture because culture is something that um, really is one of the most powerful forces that you have in every organization. Culture, whether it's your family, your business. Um, I could tell you story after story of businesses, of guys, business guys that I talk to and different things, that they have, they have the wrong culture in their business and it's destroying their business. And they just can't seem to get out of the, the wrong culture. It, it's, it's, it's tough for them. I've seen families that develop a wrong culture in their family. And ultimately, a lot of times it leads to divorce because inadvertently they wind up with a culture in their family. And culture is d defined this way. It says a culture is a way of life of a group of people, the behaviors, beliefs, and values, symbols that, that they accept, generally without thinking about it. They are passed along by communication and imitation from one generation to the next. Culture is a symbolic communication. Now, Jesus said this, and I think this is apropos to, um, uh, and Coach Eagle goes to a great friend of mine's church in Camas, uh, Dave McCabe's church, a four-square church out there. Dave's one of my best friends, and so... Thanks for, I'm, I'm, I told him I was robbing you, so he, he kind of looked at He texted me, he said, where are you at this morning? So. He did? <laughs> did you tell him you were at my church? I did. Okay. So, who, uh, I might be in trouble. <laughs> now, Dave's one of my greatest friends, great pastor. I love that guy so much. Matthew 15, 6 says this. Jesus was talking to uh, <clears throat> the Pharisees, and he says, then he said, to honor Father and Mother, he says, thus you have made, I'm just telling you this part of the verse here, but he says, Thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect because of your tradition. So in other words, these religious people had got outside of the word of God, and they developed a culture. And he said, Jesus t told these religious people, he said, you've made the word of God of none effect because of the culture you've developed. Think about the power of that, the power of culture that actually overcomes the word of God. So uh, culture is important. So I was just going to bring these guys together, and they've worked together. How many? How long have you guys coached together? For I ask you all these questions, and you got. <laughs> you didn't ask that one. <laughs> well, but I, but I, um, I started at Evergreen, and he was head coach in '91, and he went he went to Redmond for a couple of years, and uh, I don't know, 25 years, something like that. Okay, so, 25 yeah. years they've coached together. And they actually like each other. They're going to watch the Super Bowl together and stuff like that, too. So Yeah, that is amazing. That is amazing, yeah. too. So so let's talk about that and how it relates to family and business and, and, uh, and, and sports teams. I think sports are a good analogy of family and different things. And How do you guys keep everybody on the same page? 
Uh, well, you know, the, the one thing that uh, as a head coach I can't control is, you know, who's going to be on our coaching staff. And so I try to find guys who, uh, I'm, I work in a public school, uh, but it's, uh, my pastor said maybe it's not a good idea to mention that you know, a lot of the, our coaches are Christian guys, but we try to find guys who are high character, uh, strong standards, high standards, uh, and they have coaching expertise, and that, I can control that, so I can control that part of our culture and, and who we put before our kids. That's my job is to put the best coaching talent, best high character people in front of our kids that I can. And so what do you look for in character? What do, what do you what do you look for in that? I mean, well, you know, it's kind of one of those things that, you know, I, you know, I don't I, I'm kind of checking the boxes in my mind as I as I meet somebody. And I, I know within 30 seconds of, of having met someone that that this is somebody that we that you just know it, you know, and I think uh, I think uh, you pray about things and, and you, you know right now that, you know, please God put before us someone that will, would be a good fit for our program. So lo and behold, they show up. <laughs> yeah, I, I do think, uh, Coach Eagle, I do think it's important that uh, every, every successful organization has somebody that kind of, you know, you have great teams under you. I have a great staff here and I can't do it without them. But every successful team or every successful family has somebody kind of driving the vision. We're, we're really, uh, the, I don't know if it's the monitors up here or whatever it is, guys, but uh, somebody, they have a, a, a guy driving the vision. And would, that's, probably, that's probably you driving the vision. I don't mean, when I say drive, I don't mean like a, you know, you'll do this or what. So somebody's got to say just exactly what you said right there. Well, I think, you know, we have some things that are foundational about, about our program, but I think, I think we're smart to uh, continually, you know, this part of our program is not going to change, and, you know, how we treat kids and how we go about our business day to day, how we uh, teach the process of trying to be successful, and using football as a vehicle to teach life lessons. You know, uh, the world and the secular world values winning, and, you know, so we're going to use that platform to really uh, reach kids and teach them those things that, you know, really it's about the process. And then we talk about, you know, what lasts and stands the test of time are the relationships you build with kids. You know, I just got a uh, email, I'll get emails from kids, uh, players 20 years ago that will talk about some of the things we talked about during the season that they're using today, so. Fantastic. So, Dan, talk about that a little bit, um, your relationship and how that you see that with um, the culture you guys have developed together. What, what's your role in, as, a, as a defensive coordinator? How, what's your role to come in together with the, with the coach and staff and different things? And your supportive role, I'm sure, that, I'm sure that you've got opportunities to disagree. Um, I'm sure, and, and, and I'm sure that that's probably only happened one or two times yeah. in your whole life. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm sure that you guys, I mean, you can have somebody on a team disagree, but if they're disagreeable, there's probably a big difference in that. Yeah. So talk about that just a little well, bit. Well, uh, one of the things that he does really well as the, the guy who sets a vision, the leader of, of all of us, is that he, he trusts us. And here's your job, get it done. And he doesn't micromanage. You know? And so that says to me is that now I have that responsibility to, to feed that trust. You know, that's, that's a big thing. And I do the same thing with my kids on the field, and I do the same thing with the guys that are on my side of the ball, is that um, it, you hire people, and you got to trust them. You know, you got to trust whatever that is, is that he says, okay, here, here's the ball, you run with it. Now, yeah, we had an agreement this year at a, a, a crucial game, a league championship game, um, and he, he let his feelings be known to us, and I said, great. <laughs> but... He said, I also trust you. You know, you, we've been down this road long enough to go, okay, I'm going to let you guys do what you think's best, even though it's his program to call that kind of shot. But he includes us, and we're part of that team. We feel that, you know, we're part of the whole process, and we're part of that success. You want to elaborate a little bit on what it was? Or anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to talk about coverage, and then we got to talk about blitzes, and so let's not go down, let's not go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the proof of the pudding is undefeated season. Yeah. That's really the, you know, the, the thing. So, yeah. So how does the, um, in this whole deal with culture and uh, relationships and coaching together, how's it intertwined with your personal life? How does, 
you know, families intertwining? How, how, does, how do you guys, I don't even know if you separate. I, I hate the word separate. You know, it's like someone saying, Therese and I are going to separate the church from ourselves. We don't, how do you do that? It's all part of our life, you know. I mean, it's, you know. Part of it, I think, is that, <clears throat> like he said today, we're going to go watch Super Bowl at his house, and we like hanging out with each other. You have, we spend so much time together, you have to like the people you work with, or at least respect them and get along with them, you know. And so that's part of it. It's just having that working relationship and, you know, not be at each other's throats. You know, that's just that kind of... Um, we want to be around each other, you know. I mean, it was it was really tough after the last game. Even though we won a state championship, nobody wanted to leave. Nobody wanted to stop that that whole thing. And yeah, if you're winning, it makes it a lot easier. If you're 0 9, it's like I'm going home and start drinking or something, you know. So There's some honesty yeah, there. Yeah, totally. So anyway, go ahead. Uh, I think you just, uh, you know, it's a it's a calling. I think teaching and coaching is a calling, and this is, uh, you know, like I feel like uh, okay. God has put uh, me here to to be an encourager or to uh, every now and then I'll pray in the morning, you know, God, please put before me uh, that kid that needs encouragement or needs uh, uh, whatever, you know, a boost. And then, you know, somebody will misbehave and lo and behold, you know, uh, this person will be in front of me. I mean, I've been waiting for you. I knew you were coming. I knew you were coming. So I just think that... Uh, I think you could view it that way. And, you know, I just want to say also that, uh, you know, uh, Dan alluded to this, but, you know, Dan is such a great teacher, and he talked about trust. And, you know, uh, a great teacher and a great coach is going to take the complex and make it a appear simple. And, you know, uh, in, you know, people that don't play football don't they just think, how, how, how tough is it? Just go get the ball and get yeah. the, you know, there's, a, there's really a lot. You know, I, smart is good. Smart is really good, and we've got kids that are, are, that are bright, but also we have really, really good coaches that uh, I think we have something like 300 years of coaching experience. We've got 15 coaches, and uh, uh, they do their job, and uh, they're able to, we, you know, uh, simple is genius. Simple, making it simple is genius, and the way you can convey it and describe it and explain it and, you know, I, my pet peeve is the, is the guy that always says, I've told him 10 times and he still can't do it. <laughs> well, maybe we don't have the right guy coaching. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think what's changed over the time is, is it, coaches used to think, you know, the kids are here for me. This is my program. And I think uh, things have flipped. Now it's, you know, what can I do to make, uh, be a positive influence in this kid's life, and I'm here for you. What can I, uh, can I, servant lever, leadership, what can I do for you? To add on to that, I think one of the things that's been on my heart, and you see it in our coaching staff, in our program too, is unto the least of these. You know, that kid that, God, you shouldn't be out here, kid. <laughs> How do we treat that kid? Right? How does he feel like he's part of the process? He's important. Does he get a ring? Do, you know, does he feel unto the least of these? Because yeah, everybody treats their studs and their superstars awesome. Even if the guy's a prima donna, is like, you know, well, thanks for playing for us. You know, there's a lot of that kind of things that happen. But what about the kid that he's not going to get a lot of glory out of this? He'll never play college or pros or anything. And I think that our staff does a pretty good job of seeing those kids and make them feel important. And you never ever give up on somebody. We've seen kids going freshman, that dude, he needs a genetic transplant, okay? <laughs> We've seen that kid go, he's a starter. I mean, if you honestly, if you knew football and you sat down and looked at the talent just in our secondary this year, you'd go, no, I wouldn't pick these guys. You just wouldn't. From their freshman year now, you go, no. But what that speaks to is their commitment to excellence, their hard work, their buying in. And that's, to me, more important than some stud that goes plays pro and, like, you know, whatever. But it's the kids that are the last. You know, where they, what experience are they having in our program? Good. You know, I think that, um, of course, I came from a sports background, and, and um, Coach Blue was my coach, and I think I've interviewed him one time a few years ago. And I don't know, to me, um, and, I, and I think I, you'll find this is your emails that you get 20 years from now. People, I respect Coach Blue because he was, he, he was a father figure to me and he was a tough guy. He was, he was tough on me. And I appreciated that. I mean, I just say this, that, that if Coach Blue needs anything, I, he can call me and I, I don't care what, if he needs money, what, I don't care what it is. 
just because I feel like he sh helped shape my life, you know. So I think a lot of times you guys are probably doing more than you think you are as far as shaping lives and different things. What are some culture killers? What, do you, what are some culture killers that, um, that you guys have experienced or, or try to be culture killers in, in, uh, you know, in, your, in your program? Well, you know, it's always, it, it, never, it never changes. It's taking, taking the, uh, the me and turning it into we. You know, nobody, nobody, uh, it's hard to get kids sometimes to sacrifice their own individual personal glory to, uh, for that, what's best for the team. And so that, that never changes. And I, and I found, you know, uh, you know, when you talk to a group of players, uh, the one guy, you might be talking about one or two guys, but they never think you're talking about me. You're not talking about me, not me, no. So I found that uh, I try to, you know, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and let them do most of the talking and try to, try to break down that thing and, you know, you know, we may ask you to change positions. You know, you don't want to, but it might be what's best for the team. So the biggest thing you would say is selfishness, basically? It was yeah. a pro and I, I would say that's probably the culture killer in any organization is probably selfishness. And, and to go with that, it's funny because I was thinking that same word, and it's fear, right? It's all about the fear of me not being recognized for who I think I am or, or the fear of me not playing and my dad's on me or my friends don't respect me. And it's just a fear-based thing. And if you, can, if you can stomp fear out, fear is the greatest enemy we have, right? Mm -hmm. And if you can stomp that fear out and make them not as fearful but fearless, then selfishness has a tendency to go backseat. Yeah. If, if you take that and go, look, yeah. it, you're going to get the ball. You're going to, you know, our, for this team this year, I don't know if, again, the guys that don't get any credit on the field is the offensive line, okay? But he does, and our offensive line guys and our whole team does a good job of building those guys up that don't get a lot of attention. So it takes that kind of fear of, well, we don't, you know, all the studs get all the attention. But, and that goes with coaches too. You know, every coach wants to feel they're contributing. So it's that fear of not being important, I guess, and not being a contributor. And if you can take that and, you know, work that out of the system, it helps. Oh man, it's a lot of freedom. You know, I, and I wanted to add, you know, what a lot of time we talk about <clears throat> dinner table loyalty, you know, and so, you know, it's very easy uh, for me to see what players are bought into what we're doing. And it's very, you know, uh, kids have not learned that, uh, adults have learned this, that I can shake your hand and talk to you and smile at you, but I don't like you very much. Ki kids haven't learned that yet. And so they, they can't hide uh, their feelings, so I can tell right now who who is bought into. Uh, you know, or, you know, I can tell that if I have an athlete that is uh, not necessarily bought into what we're selling or doesn't trust what we do, I need to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation because I can tell oftentimes that someone on the outside of our inner circle is communicating this, which is not necessarily helping our program. So sometimes we can overcome that. I, the other thing that you brought the term is, is bought in. I work at another high school in the area and who's had past success and, um, well, at the highest level, and it's not anymore. And these kids finally find out that I, I don't advertise that I coach at Camas, but they find out and they start asking me questions usually every year. And I said, you know what the difference is? There's one single difference to our success. It's, it's not athletic, okay? It's, you guys got great athletes. It's our kids are bought in and you don't trust your coach. That's it. You know, they trust the process, they trust the kids, they trust the people around them, and you don't trust any of that. And you will never have success until you do. So that, that's what I truly believe. Once, like you said, our kids buy in, that's where, that's where championships come from. It's, again, it's not about necessarily athletes, but it's about those kids on the same page. What about, um, so have you guys ever had like this ro a rogue player that just, you, you know, your personal contact. You don't want names, do you? No, 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 no. <laughs> we don't want to get sued. <laughs> well, they'll sue you. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Have you ever had rogue players that just, you've had, I mean, tell us, talk about how, how do you, I mean, you said personal contacts with them, but you've just ever had those guys where you've either had to let go or you just say, um, we're just going to put up with it. You know, we look at like, you know, we're all on the same path. We're all traveling down the same path. And some kids are farther along that path than others. And I just look at it like, you know, he's just not getting him. He's way, way back there. So we've got to 
bring him up and keep encouraging and, and keep loving him up. You know, he just doesn't get it yet, or he's not ready yet, and keep uh, keep him. You know, you know, I'm, we're not the kind that we're. You know, we're going to get rid of somebody. I think we're going to. Uh, you know, we've suspended kids. You know, for inappropriate things, but getting rid of someone is not is not the answer. It doesn't help anybody. So it's it's, not, it's more than the wins. It's it's really taking each individual player one-on-one -on -one and spending the time to love them up and coach them up and, um, you know, get them on board. What do you guys feel like is the best um, unifier of your whole team? What's, what keeps everybody, I mean, you're, you, you told me in the green room that you guys hardly see each other. Right. Because you come to practice, you go do your thing, you go do your thing. So you could have a tendency to get separated or disunified. Anytime there's division, um, you know, there, anytime there's separation, there could be d division. Oh, I, I try and create that. I you said, if you don't like playing defense, go over with the wussies and play <laughs> offense. <laughs> so that's, you gotta thrive on that, right? <laughs> well, that's true. Hey, you know, we just say, you know, if you, if you don't have, if you, get, if you don't play defense, you better have thick skin. Yeah. You know, you better, you gotta be, you know, <laughs> go over there. <laughs> go, go over, or you come over here. Come over here. We'll come, on, come on the offense. Come over we'll here. You. you know, we'll love you. Up. You know, the defense is a different, different yeah. mentality. Yeah. So, what was so. The question? <laughs> <laughs> I think we lost it there. How do you? How do you? you what's the number one unifier of your team? What's the number? You one know, unifier? I, I, I think we do it. We have a. You know, we're like, like any other school, at trending. You know, we move the school day back because kids can't. You know, it's ridiculous, but. I shouldn't say that, but it is ridiculous. Uh, we start the school day, so we have a zero hour. So we have 65 kids that come in before school and lift weights. So you work together, you work together, and so my job is to get the kids. Hey, missed you today? Where were you? So and they started this. I can tell you this. Here's the cultural thing, and, and uh, the the Monday we won the state championship on a Saturday night, and on Monday. Uh, we had school, it's pouring down rain, and as I was, well, this is neat, I get to go home at a normal hour. So I got in my car and I'm driving by the practice field, it's pouring down rain, there's 20 kids on the field practicing, there's no practice. It's this, for the next year, it's, 20, it's less than 20, 48 hours later, you know, you talk about culture, and, and there's, you know, we, we define culture as, um, what others find abnormal, we find normal. This is just, this is who we are and this is what we do. And so we want to put this, so that's a great unifier is that we work together, we hold each other accountable. And I, and I can tell you, you know, a lot of coaches make this mistake. They say to kids, you gotta be better, you gotta be a better leader. But nobody ever sits down with that kid and says, here's what we mean by, here's what it looks like to be a great leader. And, and this happens a lot, is it's very difficult for kids to call other people. It's a, hard for adults to call people out. Typically, if I'm mad at Dan, people, well, I shouldn't say this, but if I'm mad at this adult, I'll go tell over to this adult and tell this adult why I'm mad at him. Yeah. And that's, you know, so you have to have a culture where, you know, look at I trust you to do this. I don't necessarily agree with what you're doing. This, this is, I'm, we're talking about the. The, the union game is I wanted more I pressure. Wasn't given names. Bring the pressure. <laughs> Blitz. Let's get bring into it. this. I, I said, that's what I would do, but it's your show. He's the head coach of the defense. He's, hey, we played 14 games and held 12 opponents to 14 points or less. That's amazing. That's really amazing. Now, I go to Camas High School and look in the hallways. I see an ocean of 5'8, 150. <laughs> I'm saying they're not very big dudes walking around, but you know his teaching, and, and he's the head coach, and I, I can't remember what the question was. But. That's enough. So, do you guys? So, like, I, I know that. Um, do you guys set a goal to win the state championship, or do you just make? Are you just try to better your team? Is there another goal? That's what. Lombardi, right? Oh, Winning isn't everything. It's the only thing, right? Yeah. So do you guys, do you guys set that goal? I mean, do you, do you actually walk in the seasons? And are, are, is that driven from the coaches, or is it driven from the players? Or how do you guys look at that? I, don't, I think it's an unsaid thing, isn't it? I don't know. 
we really don't talk about it's just it part of your lot. culture yeah it's part of the culture that you it's an expectation to, you expect to win every yeah year. yeah yeah that's i think that's the uh, the other thing that's in life is um expectations right what are your expectations and how do you get there what's the vision and uh, what are you willing to, to do to get that vision? And we can tell you teams that we've been on at Evergreen and Camas who did not have that expectation. And then, or did have the expectation, but weren't willing to do the work to fulfill that vision. Because there's work in it. You can't avoid work. You can't. It's just, if you are a lazy person, go play the lottery and try and, you know, get lucky. But other than that, there's no formula. Because especially in the physical world of football, you will be exposed if you don't work. It's just, you know, I mean, our offensive line just crushed people. And the fourth quarter is like, you can see the white flag go up because they put in the work. We lost our best offensive lineman who's going to USC at the beginning of the year. And they didn't miss a beat because they put the work in in the off season and just rolled people. It was amazing. You know, I think that's probably the, if I can talk to you guys about business and family, is probably one of the greatest things you can say. You got to put the work in. I mean, I mean, f great families aren't built sitting around just watching TV all night long. They're built on vacations. They're built around the dinner table. They're built, um, you know, I, I, I grew up, uh, uh, Coach Eagle and I were graduated the same year. He was a river rat, though, and I was a, a battleground guy. So, But um, we were talking about some of the funny traditions that aren't, aren't allowed anymore. Uh, but, Most. But... I, we sat at the uh, most, but we sat at the dinner. Even though my parents went through a divorce, we sat at the dinner table every night. And I think somehow a family needs to create a dinner table, whether it's a dinner table, or whether it's some other place where they need to create and businesses need to create a communication level of, of that keeps everybody on the same page. Yeah, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that that's what, especially boys, are starving for is family. You know, we're pretty forced in the situation we're in at Camas. But the other school I'm at is not quite that. But they want to belong to something. They want, and they'll find something to belong to, whether it's good or bad, they will find something to belong to because that, that says you're part of something, you're important. And so the, the word that keeps coming up, and you listen to the pros, even the Super Bowl, they'll talk about family, okay? I'm going to play for my brother because that's what really what we want. That's what God's put into us is to have that kind of relationship. How do you... Uh how do you deal with the highs and the lows of winning? I mean, you guys have won several state championships, but um, you've lost a few too. I, I, I had a, this is funny because the one, what was the year that just in the last few seconds you guys lost it in the 13? I've got a text to Dan ready to send that says, congratulations. And I thought, I better not send that. This is hurting already. <laughs> And literally, they lost it in the last few seconds, and I thought, oh, thank God I didn't send that text. <laughs> Dan would have left our church, I think. <laughs> Joel, uh, where's Joel at? But anyway, Joel, uh, he might have had to go home. We, we've been having, they've been having some issues with their grandbaby, but um, Joel, they got, uh, he played, for, my son played for River, and they got second in state in, um, in, in, in baseball the year when, when he was a senior. He hits 565, and, uh, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> but um, but Joel for ten years said I, I think about that game I lost every day. Yeah. He said I he said I almost wish I wouldn't have got there because I think about it every day of my life. How yeah. do you deal with the highs and lows? Yeah, that's a, oh my gosh, I knew you were gonna ask that because that that's the measurement for us. You know, we're th I'll tell you what what a minute left in the game. We're up thirty five to fourteen. This no no not, this year. This year, we're up 35 to 14. There's a minute left to go in the game. We have the ball. It's over. I'm still freaking out. I'm still freaking out because in 2013, this team was an excellent team and it was the best team in the state, but it just didn't happen. With 55 seconds to go in the game, we're up by 13. We go for it on fourth down, don't get it. Next play, they score. Onside, they go down and score and win by one point. In 55 seconds, you lose a state championship. We're 13 and 0, and we're the better team. And so, okay, now, I remember asking myself that. How do you come back from this? You know, how do you come back from something so traumatic in, in the goal, you know, for Camus, that was, would have been their first title. And what you do is you go back to work. You know, one play at a time. And, and you just go back to work and just do what you and trust the process and just keep moving forward. Because if you live in that moment of trauma, that's your anchor. You know, you've talked about it before. If you live in that moment, that's your anchor. You can't move beyond 
that anchor, and you'll never get free. How did you deal with that? He drank a uh, lot. It was, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, we. We thought, I've heard this said before, is if, uh, you know, 16, 19 doesn't happen if 13 doesn't happen. You know, I think it, uh, I think uh, we try to say that successful people uh, evaluate themselves first. Unsuccessful people evaluate everyone else but themselves. And so uh, I, we're always trying, I, I'm always trying to look at, you know, what, you know, what can, as a, I think a servant leader is always trying, what can I do better or uh, on Sunday, we meet as a staff, and I call it blind spots. I said, well, you know, what, what am I missing as a head coach? Uh, that, and I, and I, you got to have, uh, you got to be willing to let people. What I don't want, we call it a parking lot conversation. This is that people won't say at the meeting what they really feel. Then they get, they find somebody else, and they have a conversation at the car about what they're really upset about. So you know, I, you, you know the beautiful thing about getting older is the filter doesn't work as well. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and say it, I, and I and I I just love that because we got you know we got some guys that are you know pushing 70, man. They're just gonna say it. They're just gonna say it, and I and I love that about working with the guys I work with, is because they're just gonna say it, and we're gonna deal with it. But once we walk out the room, uh, you know we're gonna we're we're all bought in, and that's just the way it's gonna be, and and we move forward. Dan's the boss, of the defense, and. And we, you know, the offensive line coach, he's the, he's the head coach of the offensive line. And, and then we're just going to, we're going to go. So I think that's, I think that really is, uh, you talk about culture is you can't be afraid to say things and you can't have thin skin enough that, well, I didn't like that very much, but let's just move forward. You know, I, I think this is, I, I hope this is helping businesses and families because there's so much of this stuff that you can just take into you know, so many times, man, if you don't communicate with people, if you don't, if you don't directly communicate with people, um, I'd rather, I think a lot of communication when you're, when you, you know, if I got to talk to Dan about something, a lot of people take it as though, like, like they're wrong. No, it, it doesn't necessarily make you wrong. It just doesn't make, it just doesn't make you doing things the way we do things. And, and so I, I there's nothing wrong in, in staff and different things. Um, I think that's a great with businesses and families and different things is, you know, we make it clear in our family that we are a ministry family. Now, Joel doesn't have to be in the ministry, although he led worship up here this morning and preaches and different things. But I never told Joel ever. He had to. I, you don't have to be. I, I never I never called him. I never told him he'd pastor. I never. Now he's on staff. He's a pastor of our church, one of our pastors. But I never told him that. But we are a ministry family. That's that's who we are. That's our that's our culture. That's who we are, and so you, you got to come and contribute to that. Whether you run a business, whether you're so on and so forth, and I think it's important for every family to define who you are. Um, you know, we're a Christian family. We go to church. Well, then go come to church. We we're we're uh, you know we're, we're a family that's you know this is what we do. This is who we are. A business is the same way. We're a business where we're a generous business. Well, I mean, you have to, somebody's got to drive that culture and just demand. When I say demand, I'm not talking about a demand in the sense of just, I'm the king and I tell everybody what to do. But you have to, somebody has to come up by example and say, this is who we are. This is how, we, how we're going to live. And, and I, I think this has been great today, guys. And one more question, one more question, then we'll, we'll, we'll let these guys go because it's time to go watch the, uh, Kansas City beat the 49ers. Yeah, I didn't get claps from over there for some reason. So uh, how do you guys personally prepare to be the best you can be for your team? Now, that'll be the last question. Uh, for me, I, I think I learned from my college coach, and he said, I don't care if I have to go to a junior high program to learn, I'll do it, right? Always being a learner. And that, always that, be a learner. Always be a learner. You know, you know, never think you're the smartest person in the room and say, okay, I can always learn from that person or that person or that person. You know, I, I listen to, you know, whatever, I don't care what it is, but I'm always trying to learn to get better because I have a responsibility to, to be better. Because in, in football, the game changes so much and it, it flows so differently from year to year. And so I have to be ready for those changes. And if I just, oh, just the way we do it and we're not changing. Well, what if you got a guy who's, you know, 
he's slow and dumb and he can't run. <laughs> but you got to play him. What are you going to do? You know, so what's the plan? Well, how can you adjust to that kind of that situation where you got kids who just can't do what you want? So now I know how to handle it. You know, always learning and learning the kids. You know, what can they do and what can't they do? What can my coaches do? What can't they do? You know, you can ask them to do 100 things, but if they can only do three of them, what's the point? You got to find a better way. It's your job to find a better way. You know, and that's, that's, it's just. You know, I think that's so valuable because, um, you know, around here, like if, or my staff will, will testify to this, but we don't ever come to staff meeting and say, well, we just can't find a volunteer for that position. Because I always just say, well, then where are you lacking in your skills to recruit people? Um, and I think if we point the finger back at us uh, of our what's our what's our best value we bring and and Therese and I have over the years seen so many people that we started off let's build together let's build together man we got covenant relationship and they parked on a level and then we kept going and we tried to pull them and they and they wouldn't come and they eventually said I don't want any part of this anymore because we just kept growing and I think that's so important for for teams to and families to constantly grow, marriages to constantly grow. There's nothing wrong with going to a marriage seminar. There's nothing wrong with cracking a book open. There's nothing wrong with learning business because I, if when you stop growing, your business will stop growing, your family will stop growing, your life will stop growing if you don't keep growing. Yeah. Coach, uh, what about you? How do you prepare? Uh, you know, I, I, you know, just specifically, you know, uh, in preparation. To me, it's all about preparation, kind of like what Dan mentioned. But I tend to uh, personally oversell our opponents and undersell what we do. So my typical day is like uh, I'll, I'll get up at five and make coffee and flip open my laptop and watch a ton of film and go to work and then. Uh, everybody in my house goes to bed, and I'm still watching tape till whenever late. So we just, I think football coaching is about putting in time and uh, feeling like that's my that's what I can control is the my preparation and what I can and teach and to the kids. So has there ever been a do you is there ever been family issues with the you know the boundaries with football and family? You know, I tell you, I can tell you this that uh, my wife was Luke warm about football until she had a son who played football <laughs> and boy the world has flipped you know heaven forbid that i should forget to tape the seahawks game i mean i'm in it's, it's everything's changed so uh yeah so when she had a football player she really loved football so and she's asking me why why'd you guys run that play in that situation like, oh my gosh <laughs> You can't get away from that. You cannot. No. Can't walk out. I got to leave. No, you're, yeah, you're stuck. <laughs> well, my wife thinks that the football players dribble, dribble really well. Yeah. So. <laughs> Is it? Oh, drool. They do drool, yeah. All right, guys. Let, we we want to pray for you and, uh, and just pray for you. Believe God that I hope you got something out of this today. You know, you just got to learn from successful people. Um, you know, sports is, you know, I play, I play golf. You can't cheat that game. You can't become good at golf without putting in the time. And, I mean, it's just the way it is. And I'm, I'm good. I'm jump good. So I put in the time. But, just, but the, you can't cheat. You can't cheat life. You can't cheat life. And uh, we live in a culture that tries to cheat life and always blame somebody else. And for me, if my family's not right, I take the responsibility. If my business isn't right, I take the responsibility. If our lives aren't right, let's take the responsibility. And let's develop great cultures. Faith Center's taken off, man. I'll tell you, we're, we're going to do some amazing things, but we have a great culture around here. And I, I love our culture. I love our people. We're going to do some amazing things. Stand up with me. Let's pray. We'll dismiss. <clears throat> Father, we thank you in Jesus' name that there's a wisdom that came from the stage today. Thank you, there's wisdom that was spoke, but we thank you, Father, for wisdom to receive. Help us, Father, in, uh, in, in developing our families, our businesses, our relationships, uh, every aspect of our life. Help us to develop that winning culture of joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. We just thank you and praise you for everything accomplished today. In Jesus' name we pray. And if you agree with that, church, would you say amen? God bless you guys. Have a good Sunday.